Um, well, I'm going to erase some of these boxes. As a matter of fact, uh, let's see. Well, I see Mr. Stokes is on too. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to kind of highlight and spotlight our guests just because it makes, uh, it makes the recording look better. I don't want to have all y'all on the recording if I can't see nothing but boxes. But when we get to some of the real question and answer, we will kind of open it back up so that, you know, more people can be seen. But for now, uh, since I'm, since I'm introducing my guy and, uh, you know, I'll just kind of leave, you know, he and he and I on here right now for, for the, for the time being. Um, <laughs> boy, that thing got bigger. This is gonna be fun. Um, <laughs> all right, so uh, thank those of y'all that are on the call. Thank y'all for coming early. I know we probably gonna have you know, like we always do, some people that continue to join over the next five or ten minutes or so. Uh, today we have you know a good good friend of mine, uh, Doctor <laughs> Doctor Cal Cameron Calfani. Herman, I apologize because I don't, I haven't said the name Cameron when talking about this brother in several, several years. Uh, but he is an assistant professor in the Department of Sociology and an affiliate faculty member of African Studies at Buffalo State University. Um, sorry about what happened to the Bills recently. I, I know you're not necessarily a Bills fan, even though you're in Buffalo. Um, but you know, he's up there. So all that snow that y'all saw, if y'all watched the game last night, he, 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 he living up there. Um, he teaches, uh, and researches a broad array of, of different things, including, um, uh, understanding the ways that marginalized groups experience and navigate social inequalities in urban environments. He's, uh, a published author. He's written, uh, journal articles. He's written chapters in edited volumes. Uh, he uh, focuses on other topics, including Black artists' responses to gentrification, housing activism, and neoliberal governance, and Black masculinity and hip hop culture. So, some of y'all music heads, you know, we can even we can even get into a little bit of that. Talk about masculinity and how how that's portrayed in hip hop culture. Um, and so, you know, that's that's we can go on for a bit, but I want to make sure that I, I let the man, you know, kind of speak for himself. Uh, he in his free time. He spends a lot of time with his beautiful family, his wife, uh, his wife who was also a cam, and his beautiful daughter, uh, and they are and they are living life, man. So this is somebody that I've known for several several years, and uh, I just appreciate the man that he is. So students, y'all know how this works. If y'all have questions, y'all can feel free to put them in the chat. Um, if you if you're comfortable speaking, you can also speak them out. You know that that works for me as well. Uh, and you know we kind of just gonna start off with. Allowing Dr. Herman, I'm going to tell y'all a couple of things about him, man. So I met this brother when he transferred in to Georgia State University. Uh, he is a member of uh, Alpha Phi Alpha, uh, like Mr. Stokes. Uh, Mr. Stokes, our, our program's founder is, a, is an alpha as well. Um, What's up, Brad? How you doing? I'm good, man. Good to see you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so, yeah, so our, our program founder is an alpha as well. Um, listen, I listen. I'm not Greek at all, but because of brothers like that one over there, because of brothers like 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 Dr. Herman there, you know, I might I might have been an alpha if I'd have known that brother a little bit longer, man. I, that's a good guy right there. <laughs> um, but I, what I want to start with with you, Dr. Herman, you went to school on a football scholarship, correct? Well, I was trying to get a scholarship. Okay, I, was, I walked on playing football. <laughs> And then, and then you shifted some streams and then you kind of transferred schools. We have a lot of students that, um, you know, feel like if they don't have everything figured out in high school, you know, then, they, then it's, it's something wrong. And so sometimes we talk to them just about how it's a kind of consistent and constant learning process, right? So I, the first thing I just kind of want to throw out there at you is, you know, how did you kind of decide, you know, that it was time for you to kind of move on and do something different than what you kind of left high school doing? Okay, okay, big question. We're gonna go with the origin story. All right, first, <laughs> before, I, before I get there, I wanna uh, thank my big bro, Kokai, for inviting me out. Um, I know he's been uh, running this program or been with Upward Bound and different iterations for years. And we have known each other almost 20 years now. So longer than some of y'all been alive, but you know, we don't look, we don't look at you know what I'm saying? Um, but he's 
a lot of the reasons why I am why I am is because of the work that he did, you know, as a graduate student, as kind of a big bro looking out for a lot of us at Georgia State during my time there. And the work that he does with y'all in terms of trying to help guide y'all, he did that for us too. So none of the things that I do are because of my own efforts. Everything that I do is because somebody, you know, put in work to establish some foundations to make sure that I had a next step. All right. So I want to, you know, show some love for Coke and, you know, pay, you know, pay my dues, you know, pay, you know, show, pay my homage, you know, to the bro who, who, who made a way for a lot of us. Um, yeah, and he was the first dude that I saw when I transferred. So let's talk about this. Right. How many of y'all are playing sports right now? If, you, if you're playing sports right now or involved in some extracurricular activity, put a one in the chat. If you're doing some after school on the weekends or whatever, put a one in the chat. Okay, we got some right. up. I know, yeah, we got chili this band actresses and actors. We got a little bit of everything out here, right? Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, so I was I was a multi-sport athlete. I played football in the fall. I played uh I wrestled a little bit for like one and a half years. That was tough. I ran track in the spring, all right. So I was playing sports all year round, whatever to kind of keep myself busy and things like that. Always, you know, kind of undersized, but I, you know, I was county, all county and stuff like that in Gwinnett County, uh, you know, back in my day or whatever. I was not a bad football player. Um, but I went to school, my first choice before I got to Georgia State, I went to school at Western Carolina University. How many of y'all heard of Western Carolina University? It's about two hours north near Asheville. Anybody? Western Carolina, a little bit of school. Okay. They wear them colors that you wear, uh, Kiana. is like, you know, purple and catamount gold or whatever. You know? <laughs> so I went, I went there because I wanted to go play. Uh, oh, Olivia, you heard of Cat uh, Western Carolina? Is that a yep. me? Could you? Okay. Word. All right. So I, I didn't want to stay in Georgia. I wanted to get out of my mom's house. I wanted to go, you know, explore some things. I wasn't big enough to play football at UGA, even though I love, you know, the Bulldogs, whatever. So I'm proud to see them kind of winning and doing their thing right now. Um, but I went, I wanted to go play ball. All right. And I was like, my best shot for playing ball is probably going to be as a walk on. So I went up to Western Carolina University. I spent the first semester, like just in the books, making sure I was taking care of stuff. I didn't want to flunk out or anything like that. I was a smart kid, but I was like, I ain't done this college stuff before. This here new. All right, so I was in the books, in the library, you know, doing that type of stuff. And then they didn't let me walk on into the, fall, into the spring. So I walked on, went to all the workouts and everything like that. Got big, you know, I was lifting everything. I was running real fast, doing all the workouts and stuff like that. And I thought I had a pretty good shot, you know. Um, come, come summertime, you know, I'm like talking to the coaches. I want to hang out. I want to spend some time during the summer working out with the team and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, the coach, he was like, you know, Cam, you know. We like your effort. We like what you got going on. But there was a couple of guys, you know, ahead of me in the depth chart or whatever. And that's the way that it goes when you did, you know, you need a new guy on the totem pole. So it was like, why don't you go home and come back in the fall? I was like, go home and come back in the fall. Like, I just put in work, bro. Like, I'm good. Like, I'm solid. But I went home and I, I remember that first semester of just kind of being a student. That was my first time that I just had the chance to kind of be a student. And really just enjoy what it was like. I played sports all the way through high school. I was on student government. I did a whole bunch of stuff. And then when I came back in the fall, I went and talked to the coach. I was like, I think I'm good, man. I think I'm okay. Like, it's okay for me to kind of maybe move on and try some things differently to see what this school thing can do. Like, I got here, not on a football scholarship, but I got here because I was a pretty decent student at, at school or whatnot. And when I left football, I didn't tell my dad. I was so scared. I didn't want to talk to my pops about it because that was our thing. That was the thing that kind of kept us, you know, tight and everything like that. You know, we talk about football, what's going on in the NFL, college and stuff like that. And for me to walk away from something like that was, you know, was a big deal. So I went to school. I was joined like student government stuff there. I became an alpha and all that kind of stuff, pledge initiated, all that kind of good stuff, seen the light. Uh, and I became very active in student life. But at the end of my sophomore year, like the money dried up because I came from a working class family, a lot like y'all. Like if I'd have known about Upper Bound when I was in high school, I probably would have been part of it. I didn't know about that. Right? Me too. Me too, brother. Yeah. yeah. So I, you know, I had Pell Grants. I had all the financial aid and something about, something changed and uh, tuition costs and I had to come. I couldn't stay at Western Carolina anymore. And it didn't make no sense for me to stay at Western anymore because I wasn't playing ball. 
they didn't have the stuff that I was interested in, like in school as a major and stuff like that. So I was like, I need a plan B. And I knew about Georgia State. I had the Hope Scholarship or whatever. So if you're taking care of business in school, they still got Hope Scholarship, right? Mm-hmm. Any of y'all thinking about Hope Scholarship? If you think about Hope Scholarship, put a two in the chat. Y'all know about it? Thinking they, about it. They made it. They made it a little more difficult because too many of us came through, but, but, it, but it's still out there. Yeah, <laughs> I heard. So that was my my ticket. You know, I came back home and I went to Georgia State. I, I remember sitting in my dorm room. You know, I was an RA. I was applying. I'm watching students leave. Have a good summer. Have a good summer. And I applied, and I got my little you know transfer. Uh, oh yeah, Alabama. That's a that's a whole nother kettle of fish right there. Oh. Um, so I got my, my little transfer thing and I came back to, uh, to Georgia State and I had to figure something else out. You know, like here's a, me coming back, you know, to a place that I'm familiar with, it's home and stuff like that. I got this new opportunity to kind of like, my school is paid for for the most part. And I got some freedom to kind of choose like where I want to go. And it was a, a bit uh, stressful to say the least to figure out what my route was after football because I always thought about myself in that vein. I didn't want to go pro or anything like that. I had no aspirations, but I liked the sport and I had to think about who I was, you know, outside of that sport and who I could become. So I'm gonna, let, me, let me pause right there and see what's going on. We got some folks who are thinking about hope. We got a, lot, a bunch of folks in the chat who, in the, in the room who are, Got some extracurriculars and things like that. If you thinking about, are y'all thinking about going to school, using those experiences to go to school, either through band or stuff like that? How many of y'all are thinking about it like that? You can do the show of hands, put it in yes, a why in the chat. If you're thinking about, you know, your extracurricular like that. Okay, Ivy with the band. What instrument did you play, Ivy? Bass drum. Bass drum? Oh, you cold with it. Yeah, she is cold with it too. She is. Okay. She is. I ain't even gonna front. I, I, she she called with me. That's good. Okay, a lot of band folks. Good stuff. Good stuff. I'd rather play. I would, I would rather go to college on a band scholarship than on football. That stuff hurts your body. Um, but yeah, y'all got this opportunity, right? And I think that's one of the ways to to think about opening up your world, right? That that little instrument, those skills, those talents, open up doors for you, right? So you can take those and kind of use those to kind of get access to educational spaces that. Uh, you know, that are available and open to you. So the answer, like to address kind of Coke's question, uh, Mr. Song's question about like this kind of transition, I'm always in this kind of process of transition and figure out who I was. I didn't have it figured out, man. My mom didn't go to college. My pops didn't go to college. My grandma didn't go to college. My brothers who in front of me didn't go to college. I was the first one. And they all knew, they were really proud of me. They were like, yo, from little boy, you going to college, they knew you the one that's gonna go. And, but when I got there, you know, I had to figure some stuff out. You know, I had to find my way. And part of coming back to Georgia State and finding my way was meeting the people, you know, my fraternity brothers and stuff like that. When I got there, I found them. I found Coke, he was a TAA in my intro to African-American studies class, right? And finding people who were in these spaces to, you know, to just watch them. So I watch Coke like a mug. Like he'd be in the class, you know, <laughs> racing wait, stuff. And- wait, before you get too far, let me ask you about that, right? Because I know we got students in that, in that same situation, right? We have students, unfortunately, for some of them are, you know, fortunate or unfortunate. We have students who, like you just said, are that person. So like since the time they've been three, people have been like, oh, you smart. Like you going to college, right? Like, like did that put extra pressure on you did that did that make it harder for you to transfer even when you kind of thought about transferring like like I just you know because you know sometimes people feel like they're the only people that go through certain emotions right so so how did that make you feel when it was your older brothers your your parents everybody kind of looking at you like were you supposed to be this you know even though none of us did that because we do have you know quite a few students that will be the first you know, of their families that they, they, they kind of follow that same path, you know, so so did that did that add any extra anxiety, any extra pressure to you, like, as you're through your journey? Yeah, um, but not in the, it, it did in some really interesting ways. So when I was at Western Carolina, my, the pressure was on, right? My mom took out a loan for me to uh, go to school. I had loans to go to school. I had some scholarships, but I also had some loans. So I was like, I got to do something 
get a major that's going to make me some money. Right. I was like Miss uh, Miss Langford. I was a drawing dude. I did a lot of art in high school. I won some awards and stuff like that. Uh, it was cool. My mama still got my art, you know, almost 30, 20 years later or whatever. It's done, you know, in my basement or whatever. But I, I, I was like, I can't be no starving artist. That don't work. Um, you ain't gonna starve. Do your art. Create. Yeah. We need to yeah. do, your do your art, baby. Do keep your the paintbrush art. wet, y'all. To keep the yes. paper. Yes. Um, but when I went to school, I was like, yo, I gotta, I gotta make some money. So I, I became an accounting major. Adding, adding stuff up, adding stuff up. And I remember sitting in my class in my my, my accounting class. What's up, man? Yeah, I see you a question. Go ahead. Prince. Go ahead, Prince. He said you can ask your question, Prince. Go for it. I'm here for Stop when, when your dad, when your dad found out about your, like you not following the thing that he had planned for you was was he upset or that he accepted your decision? Um, that's a really good question. Um, my dad, I talked to my dad about it after I came home from school, and he was really understanding about it. Um, I think at the end of the day, my dad wanted me to be happy and he valued education. He was one of the ones who was in my ear early because he didn't get that opportunity to go to college and he thought he could have gone to college and been successful. So he was like, yo, this is the model. Y'all go to college so you don't have to work two jobs like I did. And I think he understood that I was there and had access to my, you know, to this educational experience. And I think he was, he was most excited about that. Um, I think I was scared because I thought it was a bigger deal to him than it actually was. So yeah. I was a little afraid, but I'm glad that, you know, he and I were able to have that conversation. And, you know, he's proud of me, nothing, you know, all the same, man. Yeah. yeah, that's a really good question. I appreciate that question, boss. Hey, man, and I'm going to say this too, man, like, you know, for, for any of y'all, uh, a lot of times with those kind of life decisions, we 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 put more anxiety on ourselves than 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 a lot of times is warranted. Like a lot a lot of, like in a lot of those situations, we be we be you know I mean that's what anxiety is. It's us being just afraid of what's coming next and afraid of how people will react. Um, and at some point in life, I'm gonna say this to all of y'all. I don't know what point it is for all of y'all. For some of y'all, it might be. 18 for some of y'all it might be 25 for some of y'all it might be 35 at some point in your life you're going to have to have a conversation with your parents and say hey i'm a, i'm an adult like i'm like whether i make a mistake or not whether if i make the wrong thing if i make the wrong decision it's my decision to make right for some people that conversation comes at 19 for some people it come at 28 but at some point in your life, anxiety, whatever anxiety it creates in your spirit, you're going to have to have a conversation where you say, I understand this is what you want. And it's, and it's my life. And this is kind of what I see. I ain't saying that make it easy. I'm just saying it has to happen at some point. Yeah, mine came when I chose Africana Studies as my major. Mine too. Yeah, like this is my educational experience. You wanted me to have this. And you're not, my, my out was like, you're not paying for this no more. Like the Hope Scholarship is on it. So like I got some leeway, but I had to ask, answer questions about, well, what you going to do with that? Well, I was like, I'm going to figure it out. That's what I'm going to do. You know, I'm smart. You know, you trust me to, to make these decisions. Um, and and uh, Mr. Stallings is right, man. Every single one of you is going to have to have this conversation with somebody that you look up to, somebody that you respect where your path and decision that you want to make for you, that you know is good for you, right, is going to be different than what somebody else thinks might be best for you. And those things, those conversations are scary, you know, but you got to walk your path. And if you make it, like you said, if you make those mistakes, those are your, those are your mistakes to make, but they ain't never mistakes if you can learn from them. Mm -hmm. So those are your choices to make. And uh, the people who love you, they're going to love you regardless. And some folks, you know, they might be a little aggy with you, but you got to, you know, you got to walk your path. You gotta walk your path. What's up, Kelly? Thanks for coming in. That was a good question, though, Prince. I like it. Yeah. What else? What else? I can talk. I can right. talk. He, he know himself. He he actually came because he wanted to hear y'all. Hey, let me ask y'all this. Wait, right, wait, right. wait. Who we got that, that I know is on here about some music? Nick, Nick. What's your what's your favorite? Uh, who your favorite rapper right now, Nick? Hmm. Nick still on? Because Nick Nick listened to that ignorance. Nick, who who your favorite rapper right oh. now, Nick? 
<laughs> Why are you coming at you like that, Nick? Um, probably little baby. Man, wait, 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 before you even little listen, baby, yeah. Cal Cal this man Nick got in got in got in my car one day. We were going, we were going to an event. So we had a 15 passenger van. Nick got in my car one day and I was listening to some push a T, and this man almost laughed me out the driver's seat. And I said, it's push a T. Like it's push a T, man. And it's a good album. That man was about to laugh me out the car. Push it, man. I said, man, come on. I can't, I can't get where y'all at, man. I, I don't get it. What you like? What you like about uh, little baby? Somebody in the chat, Prince said you better say little baby. So I think he on the same page. Like what? For the folks in the chat, while 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 Nick is talking about little baby, who are y'all listening to? Who do y'all like to listen to? And we can get into some of that music or whatever. And see, yeah, see I want I want to see some of this too. And as a matter of fact, not only who y'all like to listen to, who do y'all listen to that y'all think speaks towards y'all reality? I want to know that. Like who you listening to that you feel like. I really connect with this. Like, you know, just I'm, I'm curious. So I, I ain't got no pretense here. I'm really curious. Walls Group, Mary J. Blige, Summer Walker. I've heard a lot of Summer Walker, SZA, NBA Youngboy. All right. Brent Fires, Ride Wave. I heard a lot of Ride Wave recently. Ride Wave is big right now. Yeah. Nick, tell us about Lil Baby, Nick. What's up? What's up, Nick? What, what, what's on the Lil Baby track list? They got you like, yeah, that's that's where I'm at. I, that's, that's me. I see you, Asia. Nick, you on mute. That's how that's how I listen to Lil Baby too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> it's just a, like when he be rapping, it just be like it just be like, yeah, that's hard. And then go in the playlist. And it's just like when he be rapping. Talk about getting money, you know, you want money, everybody want money in the in the world. So it just go well. Okay, Prince is giving you big head nods. He probably I don't know what you eating, Prince. You jumping hard though. Go ahead, little bro. Uh, <laughs> Asia, what, what, what's going on? You got your hand raised. What's up? I didn't even know I did that. Oh, but uh, the rapper I like to listen to that speaks to me will be this rapper named NF. Say that again? NF? I'm not familiar. I, I'm going to have to look that up. Yeah, yeah his name is NF Marathon. He, um, he claimed he, him and Eminem claimed to um, be that first, but I do not know for sure. But um, I don't know the way the way he raps and what he raps about. It speaks, I believe, it speaks more to our generation because it, he raps about the struggle that he had to win. One of the songs he raps about is the struggle that he had to um go through to even get to where he is now and to become a rapper. Mm. Okay. okay. Who is who is iPhone? Who is this? that's on Tupac for they. For they back in the day move. Who who iPhone? Big, uh Shay Shante. Oh, what's up, Shante? What's up? Okay. <laughs> Two pop back in the day. Little baby on the new on the new school. Okay. See Lecrae, I see Brent Fires. I see J. Cole, Tyler the Creator. I'm a big fan of Tyler the Creator. He, he, right. he's, he's so I just want to put out there that um uh Pac and myself share the same birthday. Okay, we can continue. Miss Q what? Oh my god! Oh, <laughs> one, one less reason to like pop, and I love pop. That one, but that's a strike against him right there, boy. <laughs> no, he had your birthday. That's a strike against pop. Nobody said young. I think young boy was up at the top, Kelly. I think somebody said. Oh yeah, young boy. Somebody did say young boy at the top. Okay. Right. Yeah, I, I see, I've listened to a lot of the people that y'all listen to. Um. I, teach I just said Mary J. Blige too. Whoever has said y'all need some Mary J. Yes. So like one of the classes that I took while I was at um Georgia State as a you know in my first year there was with Dr. Arlie the Livingston. She taught a hip hop course. Good stuff. And I was like, yo, we talking about this in a college classroom? Are you serious? With somebody who knows what they talking about? This is crazy. This is crazy. It blew my mind. I was in class. I was reading everything because I was I found something I was really interested in, not just the hip hop, but I was interested in, you know, understanding about black people, right? Our history, what we got to say about the world, what we got to say about the world is so much encoded in our music, mm -hmm. right? That's why we're talking about music, who, who's speaking to you, who's speaking about you or whatever. And that stuff, that's that's intellect, that's genius in motion, man. I can't put a bar together for nothing. I can string some words together to write. 
but the way the, the ways that they're doing it is creative, it's creative genius. All right. Even when they're talking about their quote unquote ignorance or whatever, I like some of that ignorance. Like, give it to me. It's creative, right? You need but it. I found, occasionally. occasionally. Yeah, you need to come up. You need it. You know, we come up on like 20th anniversary, and can you buck or something like that. Like, I'm, I'm here for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but one of the things I found at, at Georgia State that I didn't have in my in my previous institution was a bunch of one, a bunch of black folks. Like I was like, oh, this feels really, really nice to look around and see black folks walking to campus walking through the city, in my classrooms, at the front of the classroom, right? And that's what I saw in Africana Studies. I was like, oh, I'm here learning about the things that I thought was interesting anyway. And you can you can get paid for this, for doing this work? Right. For, for learning about the things I was already interested in? And, and when we talk about walking our path, right, and finding our way, a lot of that has to do with the things that we already, that are already kind of in us. And learning how to, part of the game is learning how to tune out some of the distractions from the outside world that tell you, like, hey, you got to get money. Yeah, you got to get money because we live in a capitalist society. You got to be able to pay for things, take care of yourself or whatever. But if the end of, if getting money is just the end of all things so you can flex, I feel like we might be missing something. All right? But following that music that's in your heart, that little, you know, keeping your paintbrush wet or whatever, that because that stuff drives you, figuring out ways to to make that your living and your contribution to the world, man, like walking your path is, is, is hard. It's hard out here, but, but all of you are already have that kind of in you. Cause I, I, I figured out that I had it in me when I got to Georgia State, man, doing the things that I wanted to. Kelly, okay, cool. Oh, I love when y'all start asking questions yeah, or yeah, dropping cool. topics in the chat. If you got something that you want to hear about, it ain't got to be a question. You can talk about. Uh, you can just drop it in the chat. Uh, topic yeah. lines. And yeah, because he can. Because he can also talk about that on the other end too. Because he has taught right back at Georgia State, and now obviously teaching at you know University of Buffalo. And I'm sure those populations aren't the same. He also spent some time doing his graduate work at the University of Louisville, um, and so he's been. Oh, he's he's real serious about this academia thing. He's been all over the country, you know, teaching and learning and and, and doing those things. So that's a great question, Kelly. I, I like it. Um, yeah. So what 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 was some of that difference for you uh, in those kind of different spaces? Okay. So speak on the learning style and the difference between going to a school with people of color and that look like you versus the opposite. So Georgia State got white folks there too, right? Like you know, they, it's Georgia State is one of the most diverse institutions in, in the United States. Um, my world at Georgia State was very black because I was in the black fraternity. Uh, I was in a black major and stuff like that. You want to come say hello? <laughs> We're used to that. We're used to that. Before you have to go to sleep. I oh, love the wings. Let's go. Let's see it with the wings. I see it. Uh, she got. She getting shy. All right. So <clears throat> yeah, the the learning difference. Like one of the things that. Uh, I'll start with where I was at Georgia State. And one of the things that really was useful about my experience at Georgia State was being in an environment where Black folks were at the front of my classroom and also my peers. And one of the things that that did for me, um, hmm, interesting question, Kelly. We'll, We'll get to that. Yep, I see what you're saying. One of the things that that did for me is that it put me in a space where my 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 the stuff that uh, Mr. Stalin's called you know it's a it's weird to hear yourself being called a genius or whatever and and I, but I'm gonna own it right I'm a brilliant dude as, as you should that's a smart man right there I work really hard to to know and to understand what I don't know but being in those spaces at Georgia State and in those in Africana studies my genius my intellect was never questioned it was expected it was taken oh, you are a brilliant person. Let's figure out what we can draw out of that. How do we cultivate that? What I've experienced as I kind of move around, so I was at Louisville, I was in Michigan State, I taught in uh, Flagstaff, Arizona. And one of the things that I've noticed with a lot of my students who are want to major in psychology or sociology or these other fields is that they go into spaces sometimes where their intellect, where their genius, where your genius is not, it's, not, it's unexpected. It's treated as something that like, oh, you are smart. Oh, it's it's something that catches them by surprise and it shouldn't. It shouldn't. And I think part of what happens in those spaces is that students end up kind of internalizing that and trying to make themselves 
visible as you know as worthy of somebody else's praise and stuff like that and you don't have to walk around like that right all right you don't have to you don't have to take on somebody else's ideas about who you are um i found that africana studies for me and for the students that i teach when they're in those spaces uh we we start with the idea that you are brilliant and that you have something to contribute and we go from there and that that turns a light bulb on for a lot of folks um Kelly, if you're thinking about going to a, uh, if you want to learn Black psychology about uh, African-centered psychology, I think part of that, no matter where you go, right, you're going to be doing some of that reading outside of class and doing some of that exploration, you know, beyond what happens in the classroom. Um, I did not go to an HBCU. I have some very good friends who I met along the way um, who did go to HBCUs and their ideas and, and the the confidence that they walk into spaces with is unrivaled because they had a lot of what I think I found at, at, at Georgia State in, in the Africana Studies Department. That was their experience where they were in an environment where they were celebrated, where their genius and intellect was taken uh, as a starting point. Nobody, no, nobody came in and be like, oh, you dumb, you can't do this or whatever and dismissing you. They're like, you came here, You're, we, we're here to train girls and young minds, you are that. Let's figure out what we can do. So when they leave those spaces and go into predominantly white spaces, you got some armor, you got some gusto about you, you got some, you know, some get up about you that when people kind of try to get at you, trying to undermine you and demean you and stuff like that, you're not having it because you already know who you are and what you're capable of. Um, so I, I think no matter where you go for school, Kelly and everybody else, or if you choose, to, if, if that's your path, right? Some of you may choose that, you know, school, that this type of school it ain't for you. And that's that's cool, right? My brother, it wasn't for him. He went to the Air Force. He, he was done with school, right? Um, good dude, he's a great dude. Um, but figuring out your path, but wherever you go, you got to find people who support you and who going to lift you up. And I think that's the, that's the name of the game, whether that be inside of institutions, your families, your communities and stuff like that. You want to find those people who are going to lift you up. And it's okay, because it happens. It's okay if you choose wrong, right? So so sometimes um, I had a student, one of my very, very close students that I worked with, she ended up going to some school in Boston. I don't forgot the name of it. She went to a school in Boston and uh, she went on a scholarship. And after a, a semester there, she was like, yeah, no, nah, this, this, not, this not it for me, right? Um, and you know, I encourage her to finish the year just because I feel like in college you kind of need to give it a year. That's just kind of my feeling. You kind of need to one semester don't always tell you, so you need to kind of give it a year. Um, but I've had students to do that in a lot of schools. I had a kid that went to Emory, and after you know, three semesters at Emory was just like, I I, I don't like college. And I really started having that conversation that it's not that you hate college because you like learning, you got accepted in the Emory, you don't like that college like maybe you just need to shift and be somewhere else like um because honestly speaking you know much like dr herman is saying if i wouldn't have found the community that i i love georgia state like i love georgia state but i understand a part of me loving georgia state is loving my community of georgia state and there were people at Georgia State the same time that he and I were both there that did not have community that might not have had the same experience uh, or might not have the same uh, feelings toward the institution because they didn't ever get connected. So college is a lot like other things. You, you kind of get out of it what you put in. And so I, I want you to understand that sometimes you can make the wrong decision. Sometimes that at, at 17 and a half, at 18 years old, you can absolutely say, I know that this is the school that I need to go to. And at 19, you're going to be a different person at 19 than you are at 16. And sometimes because you're a different person, you might need a different space. Um, and it, 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 it depends, LA. It, it, it might be expensive, uh, but it might not be. Right. Uh, in, in Dr. Herman's uh, example, it was cheaper to come to change schools. And here's the and here's the trade off, right, LA. Um, uh, I see uh, Prince Prince your hand. I see uh, uh, Salala also got a comment too. Yeah. 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 yeah it could be expensive. Like this whole thing, schools get more expensive and stuff like that. Um, 
I'm going to tell you that it'd be a lot more expensive to stay in the wrong space than it is to pivot and go to the right space. That's a word. Y'all didn't catch it. That's a word. So like if you stay, I take me, I pivoted, right? I pivoted. I changed schools. I changed majors. Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, contemplating a career change at the moment. Like, and part of the game is like staying open, right? And following the place, you know, following what's going on in here. If I would have stayed in accounting major, I would have graduated in three and a half years. I probably would have had a really good job making, you know, some decent money. I don't think that I would be happy. Mm -hmm. I know people, I got a homeboy, I'm going to his wedding in March. He's my, he's my rich friend. He's got a lot of money. Yeah, he's got a lot of money. And he left grad school you know, uh, two years in. He's like, yeah, I'm good on this. I know how to do what I need to do. And he left. And he's happy. He made the decision that worked for him. And he came out on the other end very happy about what he's doing and what he's able to do for himself and his family. So I think LA, yeah, it, it can be expensive monetarily. That's a short, that's a short term thing. But if you pivot in towards something that's good for you, that's more in line with who you were at 20 than it is when you were at, you know, 17, then that's good. That's growth. And that's really, that's listening to yourself and listening to, you know, what was driving you. If you see it. And that's good. Cause some of y'all still I, just want to be the same things that you were saying at 12. And, 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 you know, just cause you've been saying it for 10 years, like you've been saying for six years, I'm gonna be a doctor. I'm gonna be a doctor. I'm gonna be a doctor. And, and you, and sometimes we forget to check back in with ourselves. And there Can are I, absolutely people. Uh, oh, go ahead. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. But um, yeah, to what Dr. Herman was saying, um, that is true. You're going to change. Um, I probably should have changed when I was in college, but uh, Mr. Kenny will tell you I don't change very well. I don't like change. And I ended up graduating with the degree that I never used <laughs> to make money. Um, and um, now when I got my master's, I do actually use my master's degree. Um, but the point that I'm trying to make is when you're going to college, you are learning yourself. You are finding out about yourself. And so through all of that, change comes. Um, my mind did change a few times. I just didn't want to make the change that, <laughs> that came with it. But um, as Dr. Herman was saying earlier, now the flip side to that is you can't say, I don't like school. I'm going to quit. No, you have to have a plan. You have to have something to go with it. Um, we're, we're not quitters here. So we're not just quitting because we don't like school. Um, and we're not quitting for horrible opportunities. Horrible opportunities, meaning uh, Walmart is offering you $15 an hour. Um, do some research <laughs> on the opportunities that you are, um, um, that, that you are, your decisions. Any decision that is, do some research and weigh your options, even, even if you don't know and you might need to sit a semester out to kind of get it together, don't just sit out. Sit out and do some volunteering. Sit out and do some internships. Um, sit out and, and do something. You, we, uh -uh, don't just sit and just sit at home. We don't and, do that here. And listen, I'm going to say don't even sit out. I'm going to say no. take, don't take a full load. Just, just me personally. That's what I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say if you need, if some semesters you're taking five classes and you overwhelmed, then maybe you need to take two classes. But I'm only saying, and I'm only saying that because if you, if your goal is to graduate college, right? Um, sometimes this is what it is: the world don't stop spinning. Period. For nobody, the world don't stop spinning. And sometimes when people sit out because the world keeps spinning one semester can turn into a year, can turn into five years before you realize it. And I've, I I've actually seen, and I've seen really it happen agree to people. with Mr. Kenny. That, that is yeah. statistically and, you and sit I, out, you ain't going back. <laughs> and I've seen that happen. So it just if I was giving you the advice, I would say, don't drop out of school. Maybe just take two classes and, and you st still work, you know, but try to take a half, a half time load or something. That's just what I would say. <laughs> just, I see it all the time. You know, a lot of mm -hmm. students who take this kind of, they take it in smaller bites because they have responsibilities. They got children. They got uh, their uh, care provider for their parents and stuff like that. And they just take smaller bites. So it might take six years. It might take seven years. The, the thing about the degree is once you get it, it's yours. 
and it didn't matter how long it took you to get it. It took me eight years to get my PhD, and they still call me doctor. Like it's it's the, that nobody's tripping off of that. Um, two questions I want to get to, um, because I want to make sure that we focus on saying, on addressing what it is that you need. Um, so now that I'm thinking about your question. I think I've got an answer cooked up for you just a bit. Go ahead, Prince. You look like your face about to fall off. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, my question is, if it wasn't for the whole program, would you still have stayed in that college? And if not, uh, what would your occupation be? Oh, that's a big question, man. You're doing, I mean, that's like, that's like multiverse stuff right there, man. That's a completely different path. Uh, I think the whole scholarship made it easy because it gave me choices that I don't know that I would have had elsewise. Um, and I think it allowed me to stay in school comfortably and kind of explore in ways that I didn't feel like I had that room to do when I was on student loans or trying to play football and get a scholarship. I was really focused on trying to get in and get out or whatever. But I think the, you know, the work that I was able to kind of put in as a high school student, you know, doing well in my high school classes set the stage for me to have options at the next level that I probably wouldn't have had if I didn't do as well in high school, like what, and you had to have a B plus average for hope when I was coming through, right? Yeah, it's about the same. I had that. So that allowed me, I didn't use them right away, right out of college, but that allowed me to go, you know, that gave me my pick of schools in Georgia. And when I needed to come back and I needed to pivot because I was listening to what was going on with me, I understood where I, I had a sense about trying to go this way didn't feel as good to me as going this way. Um, I had options to go explore with that, with that, you know, to go explore what what my little heart was telling me to go go do. Go do something different. Go find your way over here. It's not working over here the ways that you want to. I could have kept pressing that way, but I think I did the right thing for myself um, by going that way. And I would encourage you all to kind of to be open to those possibilities and those open to those changes. It's okay. You got to have it figured out. A lot of y'all like what 15, 16, some of y'all yeah, 14. 17, yeah, we. You don't have to have it figured out right now. I'm, I'm 39 years old. Figuring, we're figuring. Now, I got a little girl, and you know, I'm married. We're still figuring it out, and that's part of, you know, the journey of life. You're constantly learning, figuring it out, changing, and stuff like that. So, if you get that in your mind right now that this is a process of kind of learning who you are and everything like that, I think it'll, um, it may feel a little bit different. It ain't gonna be easy, but. You know, it's, it's good. Um, Sonyla. Yeah, I'm going to let you ask Sonyla a question. Then I got another one for you. Okay. So, Sonyla, I might not be the right person. Where, where you at, Sonyla? I'm looking for you on the um on the thing. Let me, let me scroll. Right up. here. Right here. Right here. Hold on. Let me see. Okay. I might not be the right person to talk to about Black X. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, Because we don't ever, like... Black excellence is an idea that, you know, we, that we need to be exceptional, right? That we need to be great and everything like that. And there's nothing wrong with exceed, there's nothing wrong with striving. I think you should strive for whatever your dreams that you set out to, to be like, whatever works for you, be the best of the things that you want to be the best at. That's cool. Black excellence is this idea that's coming from society that's telling you who you have to be in order to be accepted, right? We don't demand excellence for every single person in the world to do their jobs or to be the person that they want to be or whatever. I mean, I'm gonna pick on them because you know that's what I do, but you ain't gotta have, you know, a bachelor's degree to be a police officer. Like you don't have to be excellent to do that. Excellence demands that you exist up here. And most of us don't exist up here at every single thing that we do. So I think it's an idea that that's gonna add some stress to our lives or whatever that we don't need necessarily need to take in to be accepted, right? And, um, you know, it's, it's however you want to define it. Like, if you're good at, what is it that you like to do, Ms. Clark? Acting. Like to be acting. What, what, okay, so who, who's, your, who's your, when you think about, you know, like the greatest actors and actresses, you know, the people that you look up to, who, who are those people? Viola Davis and Angela Bassett. Ooh, Viola Davis gonna give you a cry. <laughs> <laughs> I've been I've been looking at Miss Bass since I was a little boy. I was just like, she's just amazing. She just holds court. Mm -hmm. If you listen to them talking interviews about their craft, 
they never really focused on excellence as a status. They're always talking about, I'm putting in work, I show up to my job and I perform. They're focused on the day-to-day or working on improving their craft little by little. Can I do this a little bit different than I did it last time? And in the world, you know, we respond to their greatness, you know, with accolades and stuff like that. And I don't know that that's the thing that drive them. I haven't heard them say that this is what I do it for. But they're like, I'm committed to my craft so I can tell these stories as best as I can or whatever. And they do that work. And I think focusing on the craft of whatever it is that you're trying to do and trying to be good at that, I think that works That works out a lot better in terms of thinking about excellence than thinking about this, this idea of Black excellence as, you know, getting a lot of money and doing all these kind of things. Be good at the things that you say you want to be good at and, and, and be committed to that work. And I think you'll find the excellence that you're looking for. I think that's beautiful. I, I, I like not because he's my friend. I really think that's beautiful. Like, um, because I do think, <laughs> I do think, you know, sometimes we deal with things in the in the in the in the macro as opposed to the micro, right? So sometimes we we look at things as these kind of really huge, abstract kind of things, and sometimes that becomes unattainable, right? Because it's so big that is you can't figure out how to start moving towards it, right? And so I think you know, black excellence is, 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 is some of y'all like just the things that you do every day. Right. You know, the, the I, I know a lot of our staff is still on the call. I see, I see, I see Mrs. Stokes is on the call and obviously Miss Q and I think, you know, Mr. Stokes is still here somewhere. Um, I can honestly say, and, uh, and not even just them, but a lot of people just of my generation, I've talked to, I talked to several people and we just look at sometimes the stuff that y'all have going on as young people. And I don't know if we if we would have made it, like even as well as y'all are making it, right? So sometimes older generations kind of talk about young folks, but we didn't have to listen, man. Social media when we were y'all age was just Black Planet, maybe Facebook, you know what I mean? But not all day, every day, you know, in your face. Like, and so for y'all at 12, 13, 14 years old to be, you know, building brands and starting businesses. And you know what I mean? All of that is some of that excellence, right? Right. Just the is some of that, the way that y'all grind every day, right? I I we we all, all of our staff, we do this work um because we're committed to young people, right? Even Dr. Herman, he's committed to, you know, training a new generation of scholars and activists and, you know, changing the world in that way, right? And some of y'all make this work really easy because of your effort and your excellence, right? Some of y'all make this work really, we could, we know why we showing up every day because we get to work with people like y'all, you know what I'm saying? So it's people like y'all, um, they kind of make it a little bit easier for people like us to to keep fighting the good fight. They kind of keep doing that. And so, you know, I I I love that response. You know, Calfani, just because I think sometimes we do look at things like excellence as something that is so far outside of ourselves, like something that's unattainable. It ain't. It ain't just you know. It ain't Jay Z and Beyonce, right? It ain't. It ain't that. It's you know they 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 are good at their craft. They are doing their thing. But every but there's everyday excellence, you know, in just effort, in the way y'all show up, the way y'all present yourself, the, the 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 work that you do when you don't think nobody's watching, right? All of those things, you know, kind of add into your excellence and what excellence is supposed to be. And I think, yeah, a lot of this idea about black excellence again is coming from outside of who we are, right? right. It's something that they're telling us to strive to. It's a picture of like. Of, of greatness that exists out here. And I'm telling you, man, like, uh, you know, Mr. Mr. Kid, Mr. Stallers, Kokai, I've been looking forward to this all day because I get to hang out with y'all. I get to talk with you. Right. And whenever I get a chance to talk with, you know, dang, I hate, I hate feeling like an old dude, man. But I'm gonna say, whenever I get a chance to talk to young people, man, I feel re-energized because y'all are thinking, y'all are showing up, y'all are asking questions, y'all are exploring things that I never probably would have explored at your age, mm-hmm. right? So the excellence is in the creativity of the things that y'all do. If y'all think about all, how all this money is being made and stuff on TikTok and all that kind of stuff, all of that stuff is coming from you. Right. Keep in your vibe, right in your vibe or whatever. They're not thinking about me. They're thinking about you. So like whatever you're doing and you're striving to be good at, to, you know, perfect your craft in some way, that's cool. Let that be it. Let that be it. 
Oh, y'all got y'all better sign in. Better sign in. Hey, don't, don't get in trouble. <laughs> Prince, I love you, Prince. I, I appreciate you, Prince. Um, I oh, see you, uh, Kennedy. I see your hand. What's up? If y'all got more questions, throw them in the chat. We're trying to get it. Well, we yeah, we're trying to get it. We got like 10 more, 10 more minutes. We ain't gonna keep y'all too long. We're gonna keep him too long either. So, I'm Kennedy, what, what's, your, what's your question, comment, Kennedy? Kennedy. Kennedy. Okay. Kennedy raised her hand by accident too. Okay. Anybody, okay. Anybody else got any any questions, comments? Why they why they think about a question or comment? I'm gonna ask you this, right? Because like I said, you've been kind of all over the 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 country on oh no, Kennedy, we can't hear you, but I'm I'm gonna ask this real quick first now, Kennedy. So you have moved around for your education and for your career. Um, how difficult is that, right? Just the the move. See, because I'm a because I'm a I'm a Georgia guy, right? I, I I live now two hours away from my mama house, right? So so uh, you know I probably could have took some jobs in some other places, could have went to grad school in some other places and said, nah, I'm, I'm kind of a, I'm kind of a Georgia guy. I'm staying here, right? So how challenging was that for you to kind of follow? uh you know the the path of of, of i'm a, i'm gonna go kind of where i need to go for this growth i'm and i'm asking that specifically because i know we got some students that really really want to get as far away from possible in their brains when they go to college and we got some other ones that's like no nah, i, I kind of need to go you know I, I go to a clayton county high school and i went to a clayton county middle school and i need to go to clayton state university right we got we got kind of both ends of that so what what was that kind of thought process for you? Um, yeah, I think for me, leaving home was a big deal. Um, my brothers, they went away. My brother moved, my oldest brother went to Washington uh, to go be with his father. My brother right ahead of me that I looked up to went to the mm -hmm. airport you know, all around the world and stuff like that. And I was like, well, what's my adventure gonna look like, you know? Um, and I read about places all around the world, man. I've been reading about stuff or whatever, and I'm thinking in my mind, what's it like to go there? So I just kind of looked at this traveling, all the, the education opened doors for me to go see things that I probably wouldn't have seen. You know, um, Louisville is a lot like Georgia, but it ain't like Georgia. Michigan has Black folks up there, and it reminds me of home in a lot of ways, and then it's not that. And then, you know, going to New York, I've had the opportunity to travel uh, overseas and stuff like that. Um, both through my personal relationship with my wife and then, you know, as a function of my job and stuff like that and being a grad student, I'm going to Trinidad, you know, Tobago and uh, where else have I been? I've been to Ghana. I spent like a summer in Ghana or whatever, learning how to play a drum and stuff like that. Like, and all of these things happen because I, I was just curious enough to kind of open up the next door, you know, for my education, you know, there's an opportunity here for you. Let me take it and let me see what it can where, where, where it'll take me. Um, as I get older, um, I definitely feel, you know, I feel at a distance from home. I flew my mom up here not too long, not too long ago, and it's really good to see her. And every time I think when I move, I'm thinking about, you know, is there a direct flight to Atlanta so I can go see my mom if she can come see me. But as I have my daughter and everything like that, we have our daughter, we're thinking about where our next move, we want to be somewhere where we can be near grandparents, but also, you know, be near the communities that we've established in different places because that community at the end of the day for us is probably the most important thing um and, and not necessarily moving around for the jobs and stuff anymore uh so i miss georgia georgia made me and every place i go i think about uh how my experiences at home shape the ways that i think about the world um, i'm in pittsburgh right now working on a research project and i was just talking to somebody earlier today about how great Atlanta is in terms of its blackness and the fact that there's these institutions that can kind of take care of our stories and things like that, and how that's not necessarily here in Pittsburgh, and what 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 might be lost because of that. Um, but as far as kind of like going at home, you gotta again, you gotta do what works for you, what what makes the most sense at that point in your life. You might stay home for college or stay close by for college, and that's cool. But then you might have an opportunity to go do something for a year to somewhere else. And you would be like, oh, cool, I'm going to take that. Mm -hmm. All right. The thing about home is that it's always home. You can always come back. Um, 
And, you know, when you go away, you learn about your block and you come back, you know, you learn about how to do things differently in your neighborhood because of the things that you see. So I look at travel and stuff like that and those opportunities, whether short term or long term, as opportunities to see some things to grow and, and to understand a little bit better about, you know, how I can do things differently where I am. Yeah. No, nah, that's real. So Kennedy was trying to speak, but she was asking some of the same stuff. So as you changed colleges, as you went from one part of your journey to the next part of your journey, she wants to know, like, what did you feel extra pressure there? Like, or was it like uh, she said, if you were on a clock, you know, how did you how did you deal with some of that pressure? Um, good question. Good question. Um, I think the pressure is always the pressure has been there for me, like all, all throughout. But I think the where the pressure comes from is different. So like when I started my college career, um, I felt like the pressure was coming in from outside. Like I was trying to, you know, make my mama happy, you know, make my mama proud and stuff like that and get a job that I could say I got this degree and I got this job that everybody understands that they would be, oh, Cameron's an accountant. He's making six figures, you know, at, at you know, Price Waterhouse Coopers and stuff like that. People right. can say that and everybody understands that something that's a good job. Um, less and less people can be like, he, he got a degree in Africana studies and uh, he's a professor now. Like that the professor is legible. People understand that. Um, but I think when I changed, when I made my pivot, to start making my choices that were in line with what I was doing. The pressure was now about kind of staying on that track and figuring out what it is that I wanted to do for myself, All right? What it is that I wanted to do for myself and how are those choices allowing me to do things that, you know, allow me to do things in my community, in my neighborhood and stuff like that to make things better. And that pressure is less kind of died down and it's more kind of like, this is kind of the, this is the engine that kind of keeps me going. Like, get the skills, learn as much as I can so I can make sure that I can use what I have to kind of contribute and to, to make the next person's life a little bit easier, a little bit better. I hope that something in this conversation that we had tonight makes your life a little bit easier, right? Take some of that pressure off of yourself that you might be feeling, right? As the first person in your family to go do something to go to college, right? That is a lot of pressure, but there's a lot of pride in that too because your little brothers, your cousins and stuff like that. What I didn't realize is that when I went to school and went to grad school, people were looking at me and were like, oh, Cam did it. My, my, my nephew right now, he's just finished his freshman year in, in college. And he picks up the phone and he says, Uncle Cam, y'all need some help. He's looking at me too, mm -hmm. right? So the, 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 the path that you take, everybody else is looking at you too. And that's not something to be, you know, to take on as pressure or whatever, but it's like, Yo, people are watching you and they want you to succeed. And then you get a chance to make sure that, you know, the next person's life is a little bit different. Absolutely. Hey, man, well, listen, we right up at seven o'clock. If any of y'all have any like quick kind of last questions that you want to ask, that you want to ask, you know, ask this guy, you know, y'all can, y'all can kind of throw them out right now. If not, man, I really want to be appreciative and, and thankful. And I'm, I'm grateful of this brother's time, man. I'm so glad. And he, uh, listen, we, we, our staff, we send out a lot of, a lot of, you know, we ask a lot of people, like if they want to come and spend some time with our students. Um, and what I can say is this brother kind of heard me talking about one of our previous calls and he volunteered, like he straight up was like, Hey man, put me on the calendar. I want to come and spend some time with your students. And so I'm greatly appreciative of that. Uh, and I, I appreciate him, uh, kind of giving of his time tonight. Uh, I know what that's like when you got a little one running around in the back. So I know you got to go go back to your first job now, brother. Um, and so, you know, I do I do want to make sure I thank you. Thank you, Christy. I see that Christy kind of sent a message to you, Dr. Herman. You can read that in the chat. Um, but I just want to say, man, we, we appreciate your time. We appreciate you kind of coming through and sharing with the students. Um, students, as Ms. Q said, if you have not, uh, if you have not done your sign in please make sure you sign in for all other students banneker and griffin we have um oh what's up nick i love you too nick what, what happened nick um nick. Oh, it took you long <laughs> enough nick, nick it took you no the whole i call, didn't nick. sorry i nick, didn't say nothing <laughs> no i ain't saying that yet. i saw it earlier nick it took you the whole call it that, took that you, you had my picture <laughs> from middle school up there it's so, so federal. You're so <laughs> fly, Nick. Oh, federal. 
Um, but anyway, guys, I'm going to send hey, out. Hey, Oh, I'm going to send out a brief. So please, if you're Clayton County, sign in. If you're other, anything other than Clayton County, I'm going to send out the evaluation. It's a it's a Google Drive link. It ain't going to take you but like five minutes. Do that evaluation. Uh, so if you're Banneker and Griffin especially, make sure you do the evaluation because that's how they're going to give you credit for being on the call tonight. So I want to make sure I say that. Do you mind posting? You said do you what? mind posting the link? I have about five people asking for I the link. Not on me. You know what I'm saying? Banneker. No. What, <laughs> you got Banneker students in here? Oh yeah, we got no, we huh? students Yeah, on. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, one, one of my good one of my good brothers from Georgia State, my brother, um, Mr. Summerhour, teaches over at Banneker. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we got some Banneker. We got a couple of Banneker kids on. Um, yeah, hey. yeah. Hey. Yeah. Do you mind posting the link in the chat, please? Just yeah, yeah. the link to Lakai is what you need. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hey. Sure. The sign in. Liz, I love your your hair. Okay, so I'll post the link to Lakai. If you're on Lakai and you cannot get signed in, once we end the call, feel free to kind of stick around for a little bit, and I'll, I'll make sure I update your password and stuff. But again, like I said, I want to make sure I thank I thank my brother, Doctor Herman.